so much of my channel ends up being on this topic, Jerusalem Demos did this article in The Atlantic and it hits it right on the head. We are in the middle of a massive housing crisis and for some people they just want to deny that that even exists, but even the ones who get to admit it, sometimes they'll just deny reality that we have a housing shortage. Remember this? The American conservative said there's no housing shortage? Or even far left organizations that perpetuate the same vacancy myth? The shortage is measurable. I've talked about it several times on my channel, but you could even just see things like this happening where you have people lined up around the block just to see a single apartment. Or the people that will admit that there's a housing crisis, but it's caused by private equity. When private equity only owns a negligible amount of all the housing units. An NYU study called this supply skepticism. As I've learned through trying to make videos on this topic, it's really hard to have a discussion about housing when people can't even agree about the basic facts. This is fascinating. So getting back to the meat of this article about how people's brains break when they talk about housing, in this NYU study, they actually asked people their thoughts about supply constraint issues, one about housing, but also about other types of supply issues. One, they asked, like, if there was a supply constraint for cars, do you think that would affect the price of used cars? And people pretty much said 85% yes. But when they asked about the housing market, people didn't think that logic applied, as if the housing market is some special type of market. So why do people think like this? Well, Jerusalem Jamas sort of sums it up saying, people might look at their lived experiences around them. A lot of times, and I hear the same argument, people will see developments cropping up and the prices keep rising on those new units. So they assume that, well, if you build more houses, the cost of housing will go up, which defies all conventional logic. Like, why would that be the case? But it isn't the case. It's just what people perceive. Now, some of this might just be that people are inherently NIMBY, <laughs> that they see a change in their community and they are inherently adverse to it. So they latch on to any excuse that they hear is half plausible to help them deny the fact that their community may need to allow more people. I get it. Here's the kicker for me. I think there are two different types of people I run into that are opposed to housing. Some people that just don't understand housing policy in general, probably slightly misinformed, or maybe they're going off a gut feeling, like this article talked about, where people's perceptions about how housing works is just misinformed. And that's one of the reasons why I make a lot of these videos, to put better information out there. I think, though, there is a second group of people that want to galvanize on that feeling the first group has to benefit themselves. And those are the real assholes that I really have to deal with more often. The answer is legalize more housing. That will get us out of this housing crisis. It's not hard.